Now we can use the Neva as a speaker. Let me put this thing up to it. Okay, let's play it again. Today we're going to be looking at the AMS Neve 1073LB. This is a 500 series mic preamp module that's based on arguably the most famous preamp of all time, the Neve 1073. I'm going to send signal out of my audio interface through the preamp. We'll then be using DDMF plugin doctor to see how the preamp alters the signal as it passes through. I'm no expert, so this isn't really a deep dive or scientific analysis of the Neve preamp. More like just having fun and seeing what happens. This video kind of assumes that you understand the concept of saturation, even in odd order harmonics, at a basic level level. If you're interested in learning more about that, I've linked some really well done videos in the description that you can go check out. Oh, pizza. Do you understand what you're looking at? Yeah. Then we're being chilling. It's the same thing. It's the same graph as a, an EQ. But the way that it makes the graph grabs onto harmonic. So like in Pro-Q, if you even make a sine wave at like 100 hertz, like here, Pro-Q like smooths it out. In reality, it's exactly at 100 hertz. There's not really information like around it. But Pro-Q shows you a big bell, like as if there's information that's like cascading down in amplitude, like on either side yeah, of it. Yeah, why does it do that? Think about it this way. You know how the higher your sample rate, the more points of data there are to your audio. Yeah. Look how much detailed data tracking points there are. Yeah. And that's why it's doing this at like 0 0.5 frames per second. Because if it tried to render all those data points faster than that and refresh faster than that, it would take so much computing power to analyze all of that shit. Just look at how many points there are. It's like Pro-Q like smooths it out to a point where it's like, okay, yeah, I can see that the fundamental's there. Yeah. You don't need this in Pro-Q. It's funny because let me get so the camera. I have this off right now. Like it's literally in the off stage. And then I can send a signal here. <laughs> See at the top, I have it set to 100 hertz, and it's actually sending to the Neve right now, but it's sending at minus 50 decibels. If I turn this up to like minus 20, which is probably a more like reasonable. Look, <laughs> the Neve is off, but we can see the signal now at minus 122. That's so weird. I wonder why it doesn't. It's all electronic circuitry. So although the Neve is not boosting the signal, I'm guessing that it's still passing through the circuitry just from the like line level that's being sent out to it. I don't know. I, I'm not that well versed in it. So we're sending at minus 20. This is like an audible. Actually, Pro Tools is currently monitoring this. It's peaking at minus 93. Should I turn it on now? Should we start going into this? So everything's at trims at unity, whatever. You can go line gain. You can go to the right or you can go left and this is mic gain and actually you know if you notice the numbers on this they if you look closely there's actually a negative symbol yeah. and it peaks at minus 80 because the way that they used to design this was these values would be based on input sensitivity rather than like actual positive gain boosting so that's already it's already saturated from the first stage but that also has to do with how loud i'm sending it here there's the first even order harmonic around 200, but it's actually quieter. Look, the first odd order harmonic is, what is that? Minus 115 versus that's at minus 85. So that's 30 decibels. Then, yeah, so that we have the first one and then the second one. And then this is our, what's that? 500? Is that also an odd order harmonic? It is. Holy shit. Where's, there, where's 400? Where's the even order? So this is very much odd order harmonics. 300, 500, 700, this should be what, 900? Yeah, 900 and 1100, and it just goes down. Okay, so I can put in more. It's I'm watching this here because I want to make sure it's also not clipping the focus right because that would just ruin everything. That would make no sense. Then we're just going to be getting distortion from that. So now we can at least see the first second order harmonic. Okay, second step. There's the even order, still very much odd order. Okay, let's go up again. Still not clipping this mufk. Do I have any more even order? Where would this be? 400, 800? No, it's not even popping up there yet. One more and it'll probably clip. What I have to do is dial this output down. If I do this, it's just clipping the converter. And if I turn this down. So the Neve, the Neve is telling us it is clipping. The light's red. But look, look now that the focus right's not clipping anymore. <laughs> Right? So I can actually just dial this way the fuck down and just start cranking this up. Because since this line trim is at the output stage, it's just going to prevent the focus right from clipping at all. Like I can turn this all the way up and that's not going to clip. I think that's something that a lot of people who have, like, who are using this, like, might really need to know. I actually didn't know that until I started doing this. Well, I guess we'll have to test it. Because the thing is, it's what's going on here, watch. If I turn this line trim all the way down, there's a certain point at which this note, like it no longer 
the position of this no longer even matters. Here's what I'm trying to explain. So see the level in Pro Tools right now? I'm going to actually reset it really quick. Okay, so it's at minus 25 right now. If I turn this up, okay, we're at, what's that? Minus 20, 26? I can't read that because I'm totally blind. Minus 28 something. Okay, going to turn it up again. Minus 19? No, minus 15? Minus 10? This is clipping already, by the way. This this is already, like, completely. Okay, again, minus 8, minus 7. Or minus 6.6. .6. Okay, I just clicked it up again. It didn't change. It only went up by 0 0.1 dB just then from that click. Again. Again. We're at one stage from all the way at the top. And it's at... It only went up by one decibel there again, approximately, or half a decibel. We just went like five clicks up and we only gained like one or two decibels. And that these are supposed to be five decibels each, each step. And look, the focus right's not even clipping. Look how saturated it is also. Anyway, so this is with the mic gain just cranked all the way to maximum. Yeah, look at that. Wow, look what changed. Well, at least the first even order harmonic is louder now than the first odd order harmonic. Yeah. Look, uh, where's the 800? It's at like the same volume. What is that? Minus 33 decibels and the 400's at minus 32.5. About the same. What about 1600? Wow. So the even order harmonics keep their amplitude for this whole range pretty much. It's like they get quieter, slower or something. Something like that. See up around like between three and 4,000, there's like a few dips, like just notches in the... Yeah, but are those odd or even? I don't even know. I don't know. These ones that are dipping here, 30... It's hard to say what it's at. And this number is getting so big that it's hard to tell. You know what right. I mean? Okay, but the thing is, is that if we turn this down, I wonder what would happen if we put this to like minus 50 again and then... So it's still going to be... Does the noise floor stay at the same level? It's sending out minus 50 now, but we have the same settings as we just did. And this is the noise floor here. My question is, if I put this, does the noise floor move? It did go down. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so this is sending at, let's send it at plus 20. Let's just fucking send it. Why not? Okay, look how far, much further down the noise floor is with this cranked all the way up still. So sending at plus 20, the noise floor is pushed down to about like 100, minus 100 decibels. Oh. Whoa, look at this. That's got to be aliasing. I could probably get rid of this if I went and turned the sample rate up to 96 kilohertz on everything, but that would require me restarting my OBS recording, restarting Pro Tools, restarting this, setting the thing on the focus right to 96 kilohertz. But what this is, is this is shit that's hitting above 20 kilohertz and then like bouncing back down because of digital filtering. And I forget how to explain it, man. Don't ask me. Ask Dan Worrell. But the thing is, once again, minus 50, we were looking at the noise floor. Look. It goes up by, f it doubles the level of the noise floor. It's at about minus 50 now, yeah. approximately. That's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, well. Okay, so this has been fun, but let's look at, let's look at maybe a quick medium. What if I do minus 40? Okay, so something to consider is that how saturated this thing gets seems to be also very relevant with your input signal level as well i mean that makes complete sense but like what if i put this here okay this is verge of clipping but look there's barely any harmonics here and look how far up we've driven this let's do it again okay now it says it's clipping the input okay now we're getting some real good harmonics here this is not near as much as we had, right? Yeah. All the way up. Okay, not near as much and the noise floor is fucked. Here's the other test I have. Now, Plugin Doctor just became completely useless here because I just switched over to this. Oh. Hello! Hello! Okay, so now I'm talking. This is like how real shit is. It's like dynamic. Dynamic. And so I'm going to turn that line trim all the way down and clip the piss out of this again. You're going to be able to immediately tell how loud I am directly correlates with how saturated it is. And that's obvious to make sense, but it's something important to think about when you're using one of these. All right. Okay. So we're not clipping the focus, right? This is the Neve here. Number seven. I can literally... Right? Yeah. Ah.
this Neve is taking a big shit. Okay, you can see it's only occasionally clipping here because I'm trying to speak at a reasonable level. It's probably still sounding pretty saturated. I don't know. I guess I'll have to listen after. Oh, I got to do, uh, I got to show the other way around. I guess. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this all the way back down and I'm actually going to push it, the push the line trim all the way up and I'm going to turn this up. I can only get, I can literally only click one into the mic gain before it clips. I could probably use the line gain. All right. Okay, so I have it on minus 20 line gain. I'm assuming the first step of mic gain is minus 20. So this is this. This is the equivalent to um, the first step of the mic gain, according to their input sensitivity value here. But I, I don't know. There's probably impedance differences and that sort of bullshit piss, but... Okay, let's just like check the level of this loudest harmonic here, this first odd order harmonic. Oh. Minus 80.9. So minus 81 decibels. Okay. Same. It's like, yeah, it's the same. And did we hit the same level here? Hold on. What's our sample peak? Minus 4.7. Let's make sure we're hitting the same thing here. Clear peaks. Interesting. Our peak in Pro Tools got louder by three and a half decibels. Okay, it get, it got quieter. Yeah, but the harmonics. Let's check the second order one. This is approximately minus a hundred and so completely inaudible. But minus one hundred and seven point four. Whoa. The but the odd order stayed the same, didn't it? The even order got like way louder got like 20 db louder even though it's only did it was it 20 db even though it's uh <laughs> okay so it does yeah there's definitely a different balance of things here between the line and the mic gain honestly my brain i don't know man i just bought this stupid plug-in thing and this dumbass preamp and now now we're doing this i don't know hopefully the viewers can draw more conclusions than i can I know like a little tiny bit about all this. Also, being able to do this. Now we can use the Neva as a speaker. I guess I could technically send some music to this. Let's just do that for fun because it's funny. Do I have like a beat or something so I don't get destroyed by copyright? Oh, I'll play Caden's song. Caden will love it. We're going to use the Neva as a speaker for his song. We're making an output. SNs to output. Oh no, we got to send it in mono. We can only send the left side. Boohoo. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's already clipping. Let me put this thing up to it. Okay, let's play it again. That's crazy. That's crazy. Whoa. Well, that was a video about nothing. Let us know what you want to see next. No, don't let us know. Don't let us know. Tell us in the comments. No. Like and subscribe. Okay, you can do that part, but don't say, don't leave a comment. Don't say anything in the comments. <laughs> if you leave a comment, we will saturate you with a Neve preamp. Don't leave any comments. Simply speak into this microphone now. You're stupid. I disagree. That was a great comment. Thanks. She's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Did I chip your tooth? Yeah. Video yeah. over. <laughs> Special thanks to KDN for letting me use his absolute banger of a song in this video. I'm actually currently working on a remix of that song, so stay tuned to my Instagram to see when that drops. Also, if you're interested in similar content to this video, then let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next.